Hey, welcome to the show. Um, first of all, the name has changed again. It's uh, now it's our, uh, it's basically down, uh, it's basically uh, you download MMT now, not just Calvin learning MMT, nothing like that. It's I'm learning still, but that focus is on like stuff surrounding MMT. So, like, anyway, I wanted to start the day off with uh, kind of going back a little bit. I had said, and I and I was quoting, I thought it was misprint, uh, a Yahoo article saying that Biden is thinking of giving a tax holiday of what I thought was uh, 80%, but the lettering was correct in saying that was 18 cents. Um, I, I don't think that will help um, to a certain degree because it doesn't say if it's a state tax holiday, if it's a government uh, excise tax holiday. It's not specific on what tax uh, will be uh, holidayed. Um, this is why I still think that since New York was able to uh, do uh, a a, a gas tax holiday uh, that it should be automatic with every state that has uh, the gas is going way higher than what people can actually afford in those states. Um, secondly, uh, there was an article uh, in, also in Yahoo, a lot of my stuff comes from Yahoo, so there you go. Um, Target CEO, uh, Biden has gas holiday only to go only going to fuel the demand. I think Target is actually uh, missing a target, uh, pun intended. And I think that the only person or persons, because I don't, I don't think a Target actually uh, sells gas. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't shop at Target, so I don't know. But uh, I am sometimes forced to uh, to go to Walmart. Uh, Walmart uh, does accept uh, the United Health Chair uh, food card, which is a combination of over-the-counter uh, prescriptions and uh, healthy food. Um, so uh, there you can you know buy stuff from the card. They also sell gas. Um, but anyway, the article basically states that there is a shortage of supply. When it comes to gas, we are a, a net exporter of gas and oil. We have been since 2021 or 2021 or two. Uh, either way, it was when Trump was still in office. Um, he allowed for more, uh, seemingly more uh, ga uh, gas and oil exploration uh, at what was already there. Uh, so essentially, he opened up the gas market with uh, petroleum from here in the United States. Uh, Biden is continuing that and actually has been ramping, uh, he's been uh, ramping up uh, more uh, gas and oil ex uh, exploration uh, from what it looks like. But anyway, um, and kind of go to the article I wanted to get to now. And I'm doing it this way because it's easier for me uh, again. Uh, maybe I don't have to explain that, but it is. Just so I can <laughs> be more uh, precise on that. Uh, this is according to the EIA.gov, uh, Energy Explained. The uh, United States was a total petroleum net exporter in 2020 and 2021. In 2021, the United States exported about 8.63 million barrels per day and imported about 8.47 million, uh, uh, million barrels of petroleum, making the United States an annual uh, Net, uh, annual total petroleum net exporter for the second year in a row since at least 1949. Total petroleum net exports were about 0 0.16 million uh, per, uh, per barrel in 2021, and, uh, and total petroleum net exports in 2020 were point, uh, 0 0.63 million. Also in 2021, the United States uh, produced about 18.66 million uh, barrels per, uh, of petroleum and consumed about 19.78 million. Even though U.S. annual total petroleum exports were greater than total petroleum imports in 2020 and 2021, the United States still imported some wait, yeah, imported some crude oil and petroleum products from other countries to help to supply domestic demand 
for petroleum and to supply international markets. The United States remained a net crude oil exporter in 2021, uh, importing about 6.11. Uh, sorry, I thought my my mic got short out there. And I had to get new equipment, but anyway, um, da, da, da. right. I was I was going somewhere with us. Um, see, zero point six three million. Uh, also in twenty twenty one, the United States produced about eighteen point six six million uh, barrels of petroleum and consumed about nineteen point seventy eight million. Even though U.S. annual total petroleum exports were greater than total petroleum exports in 2020 and 2021, the United States still imported some crude oil and petroleum products from other uh, countries to help to supply domestic. I read that part. Excuse me. The United States remained a net crude oil importer uh, in 2021, importing about 6.11 million uh, barrels per day of crude oil and exporting about 2.90 million. Uh, however, the sum of the crude oil that U.S. imports is refined by U.S. refineries into petroleum products such as gasoline, heating oil, diesel fuel, and jet fuel that the U.S. Uh, exports. Also, some of the some of uh, imported petroleum may be stored as subsequently exported. The U.S. petroleum imports peaked in 2005 after generally increasing every year from, from 54 through 2005. U.S. gross and net total petroleum exports peaked in 2005. Since 2005, increases in domestic petroleum production and increases in petroleum exports have helped to reduce annual total petroleum net exports. I'm uh, sorry, imports. In 2020 and 2021, annual total petroleum net imports, imports were uh, actually negative the first year since at least 1949. Okay, my, oh, the share of U.S. Uh, petroleum imports from OPEC and Persian Gulf countries has declined while the share of imports from Canada have, has increased. U.S. petroleum imports roll, uh, oh, sorry, rose sharply in the 1970s, especially from members of the Organization of the Petroleum Export Council, or count, countries, excuse me, OPEC, in 77, when the United States exported relatively small amounts of petroleum, OPEC uh, nations uh, were uh, the source of 70% of U.S. total petroleum imports and the source of 85% of U.S. crude oil imports. Since 77, the per percentage shows uh, shares of U.S. imports of total petroleum and, oil and uh, crude oil from OPEC have generally declined. In 2021, OPEC's share of U.S. total petroleum imports was about 11%, and its share of U.S. crude oil imports was 13. Uh, Saudi Arabia, the largest OPEC petroleum export in, uh, to the United States, was the source of 5% of U.S. total petroleum ex uh, imports of 6% of U.S. crude oil imports. Saudi Arabia is also the largest source of U.S. petroleum imports from Persian Gulf countries, about 8% of U.S. total petroleum imports and 9% of U.S. Cro uh, crude oil imports from the Persian Gulf country in 2021. Let's see. Now, here is a small list of the total countries that we get a lot of our stuff from. Uh, first of all, Trump imports from Canada increased significantly since 1990s, and Canada is now the, lar the largest single source of U.S. total petroleum and crude oil imports. In 2021, Canada was the source of 51% of U.S. gross total petroleum imports and 62% of gross crude oil imports. The top five sources of U.S. total petroleum include, including crude oil imports, uh, uh, imports by percentage share of total petroleum imports in 2021 were 51% Canada, 8% in Mexico, 8% in Russia, 5% in Saudi Arabia, and 2% in Colombia. Top five sources of U.S. crude oil, uh, oil imports by percentage of shared uh, U.S. total crude oil in, in, imports in 2021 were 62% Canada, 10% Mexico, 6% Saudi Arabia, 3% Russia, and 3% Cambodia. The majority of total petroleum exports are or are petroleum liquids and refined petroleum productions or products. Because of logistical, regulatory, and quality considerations, exporting some petroleum is the most economically way. 
Jeez, okay, here we go again. Uh, economical, there we go. Way to meet the market's needs. For example, refiners in the U.S. Gulf uh, Coast uh, region frequently find that it makes economic sense to export some of their gasoline to Mexico rather than shipping it to the U.S. East Coast because lower cost gasoline imports from Europe may be available in the East Coast. Uh, petroleum liquids include uh, hydrocarbon gas liquids, which I believe Joe Manch is actually in favor of. Uh, HGLS exports, mainly propane, have increased substantially since 2008 and 2021. HGLs uh, represent about 27% of total U.S. gross petroleum exports. The top five destinations of U.S. Total petroleum exports include crude oil. A percentage share of U.S. total pet petroleum exports in 2021 were 13% went to Mexico, 10% went to Canada, 7% went to India, uh, also China, and 6% went to South Korea. Top five destinations of U.S. crude oil exports by percentage share of U.S. total crude export, uh, oil exports in 2021 were 14% for India, 12% for South Korea, 11% for Canada, and 10% for Netherlands, and 8% for China. Let's see. U.S. net petroleum exports by type, uh, 1960 to 21. Does the, does the U.S. Energy Information um, Administration know which companies purchased uh, import, uh, imported crude or gas? Although AEW wrestling, no, uh, EA, EIA, there we go, cannot identify which companies will uh, companies sell imported gasoline or gasoline refined from imported oil. It does publish data on the, on the companies that import petroleum into the, into the United States. So basically what I'm saying is, uh, we seems like we we do uh, manufacture more of the gas and oil here. We should keep more here, and that would supply more demand for the home market, uh, helping to helping to supply force prices down. It seems. Let's see another thing. Okay, that's done. That's done. Okay, let's see. And yes, Walmart uh, ha has apparently, uh, this is from April, has, uh, Walmart Plus increases fuel discount and expands to Exxon and mobile stations, pumping additional savings into member wallets. Walmart is helping members uh, lower fuel costs with a bigger discount per gallon at the pump at an expanded uh, lineup of fuel stations uh starting to uh, okay starting then walmart's members will receive an instant discount of up to 10 percent on every gallon of fuel they purchase at participating fuel stations with the addition uh with the addition of twelve thousand exxon mobile station across the country okay so basically that was a promo for walmart which i didn't realize i was doing anyway <laughs> point being is there's a there's not a supply problem in regards to oil. We have plenty of it. We're just exporting far more than we should be. And that's basically all that needs to be said in regards to that. As far as the 18 cents, that makes no sense. Uh, they should be repealing the 18% excise tax that states have to... Uh, export the uh the petroleum that comes in uh, as far as i know about each state has its own contract with gas and oil companies uh, i don't think it's a federal contract as far as a na national federal uh contract i could be wrong about that but i don't think so um and if you want to know more about any of that, you can go to the websites I, I named. Uh, I think it was uh, eia.gov. Uh, for monetary theory stuff, you can go to realprogressives.org um, and stuff of that nature. Uh, let's see, real progressives, uh, I will be hopefully uh, uh, be, be able to turn in some um articles uh rebuking uh some criticism on monetary theory um either through my calvin taylor dot substack dot com 
or straight through real progressives. Don't know yet. We'll be finding out. Uh, see what else. Uh, watch uh, real progressives in action on uh, YouTube. Watch Steve Grumbine on uh, St Status Quo. Uh, he's going to be also on. Uh, I think it might be tonight. I'm not sure, but not, and that either he's going to uh, just be straight up talking, or if he's going to be interviewing someone, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, it is, uh, are you ready to grumble? Uh, also on Status Coup on YouTube, and also uh, the Luke, why do I want to say Parcher, uh, P-A-R-C-H-E-R, -E um, so I hope, I hope Luke forgives me for messing up his name, but at least I'm not calling him Parker anymore. Um, anyway, uh yeah so uh support this channel support real progressives donate to real progressives uh subscribe to this channel as well as that one uh any any place you see a real progressive uh that's realprogressives.org uh associated um it's the only actual progressive organization out there other than medicare for all um, I do not my, I do not myself look at DSA as a progressive uh, the part of the Democratic Party. Um, again, this uh, this show is mostly mine, but I do promote uh, real progressives. So there you go. There's a separation there. Um, and actually, yeah, I, I, I heard that there was a that there was going to be a lessing of the the, the wall of the uh, funding for between the. Uh, for uh, religious type schools, uh, so I think it was, it's not Maine, but somewhere some smaller community. I think it's a way for them to figure out if it works or not. Um, they they call it a, a, a lessening of the wall of the, uh, the between church and state. I live in Section Eight housing that is mostly owned by Catholic church, as far as I know of. Uh, so I think. Uh, I think starting in 2010 when they when they started doing all that, I think that lessened the thing between church and state. Here, it's I see Jesus Christ everywhere, pretty much, whether it be uh, pr promoting a church uh, in the area, church activities, or uh, church uh, activities on site. Uh, I myself. I don't, I can't say I respect those that have religion. I don't know. Um, I mean, I would get a lot of flack for that. I just, I just see organized religion as uh, just another way of organizing networks, uh, being able to get to know business associates and other things. If you think about that through Christianity, through Catholic uh, Catholicism, other religion, other religious uh means of that nature um that's just from what i've seen uh and if you've noticed uh through a lot of business transactions originate from meetings at churches um i have no overall proof of this but this is not just just a suspicion or a hunch anyway my point being is the fact that if they do that then i'm hoping that more and more people would be joining the uh church of satan <laughs> Because <laughs> if <laughs> uh, am I promoting Church of Satan? No, not really. I'm just I'm promoting the the thought of being able to uh, be taught a different religion, whether whether another religious religion sees it as a devil type of a uh, religion or not. It doesn't matter to me either way. What matters to me is the openness to be able to if you're going to get funded for. One type of uh, religious freedom, other religious freedoms have to be also recognized and funded as well. It's, I'm trying, I, I don't want to be looked at as a hypocrite as far as that part goes. I am not, I don't care either way. I, I think that if one, if one sector of society is funded, another, all sectors in that regard may be funded too. Um, otherwise, you you have a really, really one-sided society, and that's not good for anybody. Anyways, that's all my opinion on that one. Anyway, um, once again, if you want to learn more about modern monetary theory, one, you can visit realprogressives.org. Two, you can look up people like Mike Norman, people like Warren Moser, people like Stephanie Jelton, uh, people like uh, Mike Hudson, uh, 
people like L. Randall Ray, people like uh, Steve Grumbine, uh, go to go go find Macro and Cheese, which is on realprogressive.org and also on YouTube. Um, there are plenty of places to find it, plenty of places to see it, watch it, hear it, read it. Uh, so for people lack of, ed of education, it just takes looking it up. To, it takes having openness of mind to learn it and realize the differences between uh, mainstream macroeconomics and from what I see, the real lessons of real world macroeconomics. Um, but anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it and that's the truth. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, either way, everything you, you hear me say in regards to progressive support them, uh, watch them, listen to them, read them, you name it, support them either way financially as well as with your time. Uh, thanks for what, uh, listening. Peace out for now.